hiya Kelly Bear here welcome to my channel um, I wanted to talk about squishiness um, so yeah you'll see from the title of this video it's all about working with softer decks this year not for the whole year but I spoke about this in um, a number of my live chats that I did at the beginning of the year about how I had moved away from using Pip and Marseille decks and I was really getting back on board with Smithwaite and situational themed or based decks and not any kind of like Smithwaite deck but like soft gentle nurturing decks because as we moved into 2022 I was feeling incredibly fragile incredibly squishy incredibly vulnerable very low and despondent and just and fed up and really needing decks that were gonna hold me hold me and um yeah so i was i i used some really really soft decks and i felt like i needed to do some inner child work and and um i'm gonna go into all of that so i thought what i would do is i'll give you the rundown of the deck pairings the tarot deck and the oracle deck that i used for each month so far this year and the one for this month and um talk about uh what my experiences were with them and yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna go in so i'm gonna start with January and so for January I went to my my true one true love of tarot like if honestly if I had to pick one deck and that was it they're like you can't have any more decks it would have to be the Tower of the Magical Forest and this is because this deck you know even over my first ever deck you know my copy of the Osho Zen which was my first ever deck even over like my you know independent expensive independent decks just this one came to me at such an important time it had such a profound effect on my understanding of the Mar of the smith the Marso, of the smith weight i really just i'd never had a deck like it before um, it was the first deck I modified just let's show some cards and it just felt like the right deck to use in fact I didn't even need to think about it I just grabbed it when it came to do the first spread for my first week ahead reading for January I, I automatically just went for this I wasn't consciously thinking well I'm just going to use soft decks for every month this year it was just well I just need something comforting and this was my comfort this is my ultimate comfort deck um, I know it's not for everyone and that's fine right there's so many different decks out there there's always going to be something for someone and it's not going to be for everyone and I paired it with and I was really inspired by Dawn over at Boho Tarot or Michelle who was like, always works with like pairings of oracle decks with the, with the tarot and I went with the really beautiful Empty Cup Oracle um, by Stasia Barrington who also made the um, Sasurai Bito Tarot and the Nico Cat Playing Card Oracle. I'd love a copy of that, I don't have that. Um, and it's just really, and it's funny because I always complained that I don't like, I never really liked really open and expansive um, Oracle decks until I I got this one. This was gifted to me by Jen, Jen Balance Tarot, Jen Phoenix. And um, yeah. It just actually the expansiveness and literally like the space around it helped give me the room that I need. I've had this deck, what, two and a half years now? And it's one of my favourite and most used oracles and it shuffles so well. Just stick a tiny bit together. It's a rose petal. But it does shuffle quite nicely and it's got a really beautiful matte gilding gilding it's not shiny but it's i mean i use this deck all the time and it is like how how is it i don't know i guess because it's not shiny it doesn't like flake off but it just it's like it's like stained or something i don't know it's amazing so this this combination worked really really nicely and actually let's hold some of the cards up together so you can see just the, the artwork combination she's got the softness and the beautiful colors of this one and then the sparseness and the spaciousness but yet also softness of this one so it just works really nicely 
as a combo. It's just too cute. I'm already showing cards that I've shown, but that's because it just yeah just works so well. And it is a combination that I will continue to use. I think it's really, really lovely. So if you do have these two decks, highly recommend putting them together if you haven't already. Really, really lovely. Um, and yeah, it was just what I needed in January. It was the perfect perfect tarot and oracle deck for me to use um i'm not going to do this up properly i'll just pop these in here roughly there we go that'll do it's getting quite dark it looks like it's gonna rain actually um for february i used the tarot deck that was gifted to me um as a birthday present from stephanie over at three trees tarot and it is the oak ash and thorn because i was humming and hawing on whether to buy this with some of my christmas and birthday money and then Stephanie was like, I'm sending it to you. This is one of those decks that's standard size, but it's chunky. So I do struggle a little bit to get my hands around it. But oh my God, I can honestly say, except maybe also, I was thinking about it actually. I said to Stephanie, sent a message saying, this is the only tarot deck where I absolutely love every single card. There's no card in here I dislike, but now on reflection, I think that the... I'm trying to think. I don't know if there's any decks that I... I think there's a... Actually, tell a lot. Yeah, the the Magical Forest. There's a couple of cards in there where I'm, like, a bit ambivalent towards. I love every card in this deck. Like, I don't think that's ever happened before. The artwork. Who does the artwork? I always... I can never remember his name and then I feel terrible. It's um, Adam Ola's... Yeah, that's it. Adam Ola's. I've been following him on the Instagrams. But it's just so... And the colours just felt so perfect for like winter. It feels like a very autumn winter deck because of the colours and the... Oh, well, I'm saying that. This has a real golden summery tone to it. But it was, again, it was just what I needed. Although I did find that I struggled with reading with it. And it was because it was just completely new to me, I think. Sometimes when I do week ahead readings with decks that are new to me, but that's how we get to know a deck, right? By using it. But I, I did, getting information out of it, I struggled a little bit. Um, and I think it's just because I need to get to know it better because there's so much going on in the imagery and I feel like I've only scratched the surface. Now, the deck that I used it with was um, and, uh, Andrew Swartz's Earthbound Oracle. Um but I, you know, actually, let me just grab this so you can see some of the artwork together. Um, you know, nature-based decks. And I think that, like, aesthetically, I think they work quite nicely together. But I found, so what I was doing is I was doing the, every week I was doing the Enchanted Week Ahead spread because I was starting to use positional spreads again, which I have, I don't really do very often. I tend to freeform read or open style read. I don't do spread positions, but I felt like I needed the comfort of going back to a spread, something simple, something that I'd used before. So I used Holly Enchanted's Enchanted Week Ahead spread, which is um, a four card spread. It's really straightforward. And it's, um, what should I expect this week? The second card is, um, what do I need to focus on this week? The third card is what I should bring to this week. And the fourth card is something you need to leave behind this week. Um, but I found that because I would also pull a an Oracle card, the, the, for February being the, the um, Earthbound Oracle, because the Earthbound Oracle does have some, um, more gnarly cards i did find it quite difficult because the 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 position that i or the um meaning that i ascribed to the deck that the card that i was pulling from the oracle deck was that um what is some encouragement or support that you can give me this week and some of the it was it, it felt like it didn't really work for that kind of framing um, a lot of the time and there was there was even a card which was it's called failure and it's a butterfly and it's one of its wings is on fire if I can see if I can find it and I found that was really that card came up for me here we go as a as a, as a support um, 
encouragement and support card and I just really was like mm, okay um, so probably not the best great pairing perfect together but not necessarily this one for the what I was using it for um, and I felt I really enjoyed look, looking through this and using it for readings but I didn't feel as held as I did and you know what I guess also coming off the back of using you know my bay it was going to be like a difficult to then you know go straight in with a deck that I've never used before as beautiful as the artwork is and as much as I love it I feel like I need I do need to get to know it better um I've, I've sort of put it aside now to work with get it back out towards end of summer beginning of autumn now I had then ordered I believe it was in February I had ordered the playful heart tarot from kitten chops and uh yeah I was like, I'm gonna. I bought a journal for it. I was gonna do inner child work for it and with it, and use it for March. I put this somewhere. Could I find where I had put it? I was like, I'll put it somewhere safe, and then I'll get it out for March, and it'll be great. I couldn't find it, so I grabbed a different deck. I nearly grabbed the Sasserai Beto because that is a massive comfort deck for me, but I'm like, no no kelly use some decks you don't use as much so i picked out the circo tarot this is the independent version so it has slightly different artwork on some of the cards it's before they made a mass market version again this is very glossy oh this is one of my favorite cards ever on this deck with the little ghosts on the path oh my god it's cute and it's spooky love cute and spooky stuff um and I just, I really love the colours. I really love the naive, playful artwork. Um, and actually this deck, oh my goodness, every week, this one, oh my God, she was uh, she was showing up for me quite a bit. The number of court cards this deck was throwing up for me was like every reading that I did every week, there was like one or two court cards at least. Like and loads of repeats like stalkers and then they would move like it was really funny i would get the queen of swords and then she turned up in the what to focus on and then the following week she focused she um she turned up in what to bring and then like a couple of weeks later she turned up in the what to leave behind it was like she was moving along the progression of the reading and i was like what the fuck um really uh really enjoyed working with this one and the deck that I paired this with, I was like, oh god, what am I going to pair this with now? Because I'd already picked out the deck that I was going to use with my Playful Heart Tarot. And I felt like they didn't go well, it didn't go well with the, the Circo, so I had to reframe. So I decided to get the uh, Actor Sparman Oracle out from the uh, artist, I believe is. she's in Sweden. She's got a Tarot Oracle out as well, a Tarot Oracle, <laughs> as Tom Benjamin would say. And I believe that, um, who is it that's been using it a lot? I think it's they are over at Garden Goddess Tarot. She's been really using the tarot of this artist. But this was such a good, again, let's just, oh my God, let's show them together because we're talking about pairings. But can you see how there's a softness and a, I don't know, but also a little bit of tough talk in this one, in some of the cards. Stop waiting, it will never happen. You know, like just, just, this was by March. So it's like, come on, you need to like buck yourself up, kiddo. Um, and I just felt they worked really well together because they have that sort of expressive, non-realist artwork style that they they complement each other. Again, we've got this like a bit like the magical forest and then the um, empty cup oracle, that combination of bright colour, softness, and then something that's a bit more paired back. Um, worked really nicely for me. So yeah, I uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. Um, the funny thing about this throwing up so many court cards was that I've spoken of again before about how in March I really got back into Pip decks and Marseille. So even though I was really getting back into the Marseille because of the Sesamero and because of just binging Marilyn in the um, Marilyn from Tarot Clarity's videos, I wasn't using Marseille to do weekly readings i wanted to stick to the softness um, but i did find that by march i was starting to turn a corner with that squishy feeling that sadness that vulnerability that i was feeling that i was really struggling with um 
and I think that's why I was able to manage and manage with this deck. Um, but again, really fun combo. Really enjoyed working with them. I'm not going to put them back in the boxes because I'm trying to be quick here. Um, and then for last month, for April, so I'm just going to have another sip. I used... I still couldn't... <laughs> I still couldn't find the playful art tarot. <laughs> so embarrassing i'm like i'll put it somewhere so safe even i went this is the thing i'm telling you my short time memory is so short that i'm just really sometimes i'm like did i have a shower yesterday and i'm like have to really did i and my husband's like oh no that was wednesday night and i'm like how am i not like just the most basic stuff it's really concerning <laughs> so i was like well i'm gonna fall back on one of my other comfort ducks then which is it's actually in the bag that goes with the Circo Tarot. I should really make a bag for this because the big box it comes in, I'm obviously not going to keep it in that. And I use it all the time. It was like one of my most used eggs last year. This is the Numinous Tarot by Cedar McLeod. I just showed this in another video that I may have filmed before this one. I don't know which order I'm going to put them up in. I will probably put this this tarot video up first purely because it's just it the other one that i did was a tag and i've already just done a tag that went up on friday i'm trying to like change it up a bit for you all um but you know this this deck this deck and i wasn't sure if i was gonna like the the pairing that i had chosen for it but actually i think the artworks really work well together and it is the liminal spirits Oracle by uh, Laura Tempest Sackroff of the like Sigil Witchery fame. She's also got Weave the Liminal and this, she's got a, a um, Anatomy of the Witch. She's got loads of books out. Now, I actually, the, the, first of all, I think the backs actually look quite nice together. I don't know. Um, but I'm just going to show you some of the cards together. See, even there, the Burgundy and the Burgundy, like it just works. They're different but similar enough that it works now this was the first time of properly of you there are different ways that you can use the liminal spirits and there's a couple there's some ways that i want to dig in with it but i think it benefits from like more from like meditation work and path working and that kind of thing um using it as like a pull for the um week ahead reading was fine enough but I feel like this ha it has more to offer and I felt like I wasn't giving it its dues um, and actually there were there was a one or two that I pulled that I did struggle to fit into my week ahead for um, for support or encouragement but then what I would do so here's my tarot journal I, I use it so that this morning I did my week ahead reading which I'm going to show you actually at the end of this um, but what I also do is I like to go either on a Sunday evening or on a Monday morning sitting down to do the next week ahead reading I will do reflections not always but most of the time and actually it's really funny like looking back the last card that I picked from the liminal spirits for last week was desert and when I the, the, the book gives like three different meanings for you to pick from that feel that you feel caught you pick the one that you feel calls to you the most and I really didn't find one that resonated with me so on reflection looking back and rereading the meanings in the book I didn't find necessarily that any of the meanings that were given helped me or re resonated with me or made sense for my week previously but I found that I was finding there's like a little bit about the card before it gets to the meanings and actually the couple of the cards that I pulled throughout um, last month I actually found that I found some medicine in the, the the blurb about the card itself before we actually got to the meaning so here I put um, I put in my summarations and actually I'm sharing stuff that I don't usually share I'm share I'm gonna read out from my tarot journal here but uh, the desert I wasn't really sure what to make of this card um, but now I've had the past week to reflect on I guess this message uh, uh, was it the message about conserving resources is relevant to me because obviously the desert and you think about cacti and how there's a bit in the blurb about it i think it's page 47 let me see if i can find it sorry burial ground 47 desert there's a bit here that it says um it isn't forgiving 
the desert, that is. It takes great fortitude to survive in the desert. The desert reminds us to conserve our resources, otherwise we might put ourselves in danger. So that is a, that's part of the blurb. That has nothing to do with the meanings at the bottom, none of which really spoke to me even on reflection for the week. Um, but that bit about conserving resources, I have an energy limiting, well, like a couple of energy limiting chronic illnesses, and I have real issues with trying to manage even all after all these years, I, I, I will always overdo it and burn myself out and crash. I've gotten better over the years, but with this trying to get my shop up and running and into a regular routine, I'm really struggling with it. So um, it was, and this is going to be relevant to this week's reading as well, funnily enough. Um, but I found, and then I, I had an I my period, uh, I started getting really bad a PMS like Friday, Saturday, and by Sunday I started my period. TMI, overshare, deal with it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're all friends. We're all friends here. It's fine. Um, but basically, it kicked me sideways. So yesterday was like a complete Saturday. It was part. It was hard. It was like by about half three. I was like, I need to stop for the day. Put my pajamas on, and I had to get into bed. And then. Yesterday was a complete washout. There was I was planning to sew a bunch of pouches I had cut. I was planning to do a whole bunch of stuff for Beltoner. I was going to do a check in with my annual my year ahead birthday spread that I did in January. I was going to do some path working and sit down and carry on reading um, Aidan Wachter's Changeling in bed. I was just going to have a whole thing, and it was just a complete washout. I just had to get. I still got my hot water bottle. Neck a load of painkillers. Grab a tub of ice cream get a hot water bottle and I was just where Nobby is actually that's my side of the bed <laughs> snuggled up with Nobby uh just feeling like a pile of poo but my spouse was there to watch tv shows with me and just sit and read together or just while like he would read while I dozed off and stuff so but I'm trying to do all those things that I wanted to do at the weekend which was film videos f make pouches and um or do all my belt and stuff i'm cramming into to today to, to one day <laughs> as well as doing my wig ahead reading so yeah i i actually found that these these two worked really nicely together and i would recommend them if you have them as of combining them um, i'm really looking forward to digging more into this one i feel like there's a lot going on it feels like it like a little book and a little deck but actually actually it's got quite a few cards it's like how many 42 cards which isn't too bad I can't be dealing with those like 30 card oracle decks. Obviously Lenormand has like 30, like 6, but 35, 36? Oh, can I remember? Um, but you know, it's a system, it's fine, it works. And finally, I think it was last week, I was rummaging, I was clearing some stuff, I was sorting stuff out. What did I find? I found it, I found it! <laughs> What a banana. So anyway, I was able to pull it for this month. And the funny thing is, right, I was originally like, well, I'll just use a Marseille going forward for my week ahead readings because um, towards the middle of, of April, I stopped using the Enchanted week ahead spread and started doing three card freestyle readings because I felt like I no longer needed the structure of the Enchanted week ahead. And I felt like I wasn't getting what I wanted from the Enchanted week ahead spread. And I just had gone so back into pips that I was like, I need to freestyle. So I was the last, I think the last, hang on. Uh, oh no, hang on, one, two, no, yeah, the last two, so you can see for the 18th of April, you can see it's three star, three, three star week ahead, and then, um, like, this is my tarot journal, I sometimes, like, the last two I haven't coloured in, but usually what I would do is I'll at least make it pretty with, I've got some cut and you can't, that doesn't show up, this is purple pen, I will, like, highlight it to make it look pretty, but it's still, it's, you know, pretty, but it's, it's mostly just to make stuff stand out and look a little less monochrome. Um, but like this, I gave up trying to do pretty, like fancy with print. I can't, first of all, I don't have the time, money or energy to print out um, pictures of each of my cards for my spreads as, as much as I would be able to love to love to be able to ha have the time energy and money I don't so I'm like let's stop beating myself up about that and also 
I was getting to a point where I wasn't tarot journaling and I wasn't using tarot enough and I just was like, do you know what, just grab a bloody notebook and just start digging in because I've had all sorts of tarot journals, tarot binders, traveller's notebooks, we've all tried all the systems, right? Um, and I think sometimes people find a, something that works for them, some people do it on their computers, they do it online or they do it in the cloud. And sometimes we just need different things, different types for different, different types of journals for different times. So in the past, having a really beautiful fancy fountain pen and a really beautiful hardback journal with gorgeous paper in it has been just what I've needed and just what I've used. There's been other times where I've used, I'm looking over here, where I've used like, um, like planner style um, or, you know, um, Filofax, they actually do those ring binder notebooks that you can they're like notebooks but you can take the pages out um, I've used those in the past um, what else have I used in the past I've sort of bullet journal styled with like grid paper journals like moleskines or rhodia notebooks so it just depends and at this time in my life because I'd come off the back of having a really rough time and losing my tarot mojo and I think part of me struggling to get back on the tarot wagon and doing not necessarily daily readings I don't I sort of find I don't need a daily reading if I feel like I need to do a reading on a certain day like last week I did a reading when was it because I posted about it on Instagram I posted that I had done a reading about how to use my day I think it was Friday and I posted about um, what uh, I needed to do to get the day through the day so that was the reading I did and that was on Thursday tell a lie and that helped me that was with the little Halloween tower and a tin version that I've got um, so I felt, I felt like I needed to do a reading and I literally grabbed the deck that was closest to me, which was my trim version of the Halloween Tower in a Tin. This was literally like right here by my desk. So I just grabbed it and I went and did it. And the reading was so fucking spot on. It was perfect. So if you want to see that, go, it's on my art Instagram account. So it's Kelly Bear Art, at Kelly Bear Art, if you want to see that. And then all of the pouches that I made um, off the back of doing that reading, which was how do I get on with stuff today? <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I was putting obstacles in the way. It's like, well, I need to get a new notebook and I need to like get some new fountain pen ink and blah, blah, blah. And then, so that was a barrier. And then I was like, oh, but then what if I mess it up? Because you know, the notebook, and it's like, just fucking grab a notebook. So I just grabbed my, like, I think this was a present from Christmas last year. Oh, well, at the end of 2020 and I was like yeah and it was perfect I've actually even like put in my year ahead spread that I did on my birthday I've got I've punched in and put that in the spread and then a photo of it so I've added in stuff as well it does make it a little difficult to turn and I think what I will do once this is full I'm probably going to switch back to a refillable notebook so that if I'm using spreads regularly or if I'm wanting to check in with my year ahead spread that I do did on my birthday, I can literally just take this, pull this out more easily and then move it into the next section or the spread with the, because what I was doing with the, what I mean is like when I'm doing the year ahead, the enchanted week ahead spread, I would write, I would draw out the um, spread and the meanings every single week just to, so I don't, but if I have it on a refillable notebook with it on one piece of card, I just just move it along. So if I want to refer to it, it's there. And then when the journal is full, I just put all the spreads to the front of the journal and they're all there like on file as it were. Anyway, I've put that back in the, put that back in the wrong bloody space. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All that is to say, if you are struggling with tarot journaling, just fucking just get on, like don't worry about it looking perfect. My handwriting when I am journaling and like stream of consciousness is atrocious. Like I can make my handwriting look really nicely, nice if I take my time. But I find my mind can't, my hand can't keep up with my thoughts. So I just have to be like, it's fine. I'm just, it's just going to be messy. And it's f like, who else is reading it? Just me. It doesn't matter. Like, I know we want to have the beautiful, expensive, 
notebooks with the beautiful paper with the beautiful artwork and collage stuff in if you have the time and the energy and the money to do that that is fucking awesome but i don't want those of us who struggle especially if you are chronically ill or disabled or you're working three bloody jobs and you have hardly any time to do anything or you've got problem you're struggling with your mental health and you need to use tarot and you know that journaling will help you you just just don't worry about it being perfect it's it doesn't matter it doesn't matter anyway that was a little side rant about tarot journals um i do you know what actually on the note i want to say something on tarot journals i'm absolutely gutted that i had some journals and magical journals and books of shadows from when i was younger that i either threw away or tore pages out of because i was either embarrassed or because i just didn't finish the book and so i didn't want to have like half finished notebook or whatever and i really wish i hadn't do, done that so keep keep your old grimoires books of shadows journals tarot journals keep them or don't accidentally throw them away which is i did was something i did last year and i remember was it yeah, last year or the year before and i remember gliding simon and going i've just I, I think last week i accidentally threw away a notebook with a fuck ton of my magical notes in for my grimoire or for like my book of shadows because i kept meaning to file it into the folder and i hadn't <sighs> eventually i will have a night like i feel like having a nice folder to like fill stuff in is really nice and taking the time to create a grimoire or book of shadows but when it comes to documenting so like magical journals or um tarot journals i feel like documenting it needs to be nice and to a certain extent the theory if i'm doing theory and um like study i'm not worried about it looking too nice if i'm doing theory and practice as notes to refer to whether it's about esbats or sabbats or spell work that's when i take the time because that's information that i'm going to be referring to again and again and again frequently whereas i feel that journals are more like just get it out of your brain and onto the paper you know and if you don't ever look at it again fine but it's there if you want to it's more about the process um so yeah anyway oh my god that was a massive side quest all that is to say for this month i am using the playful heart tarot and the therapids and i'd shown these back in february because i found them so i did a tarot reading i did a freestyle three card reading and boy did this deck call my ass out so hard so my question was how can i best like get the best out of my week in order to get this shop next shop restock in order you know like how am i you know what am i doing the first card was the ten of wands which felt very apt because last yesterday i was talking to my spouse about how like we were having this discussion how about how i'm trying to push myself i feel like this is me here or this is me pushing myself <laughs> too much and then i feel bad because i'm unable to because my body will not allow me to do what i want to do because i want to add more and more items and more more pouches to my shop drops but also new items new things that i have so many ideas but i just i have to get the pouches done first and often once i've got the pouches done i've run out of time to do any research and development or make any new stuff so it's like you are pushing and pushing and pushing and it's not working the second card the four of pentacles you're going to need to conserve your energy by you i mean me i need to conserve my energy my fit the four the grounded the miser card but it's energy it's the physicality it's the body i need to just just draw it back i need to be careful i need to listen to my body i need to have you know be steady my two words of the year are gentleness and consistency and i have to keep reminding myself and the final card was the five of wands so we take we've gone literally half from a 10 right down to a five we've halved it they're like whoa slow your roll you need to go from the the pushing and just doing too much and bring it back down to the five you've still got the ones that passion that creativity my job is ultimately a creative one i make stuff it's the fire it's the ones um but you know here 
they're having a race it's a competition right a race is a competition there's that disruption there with the fives but for me it's a friendly competition and the only person i'm competing with my with at the moment in my head is myself because i'm trying to outdo the amount of stuff that i've made in my previous shop restocks and i'm trying to push myself to get new and exciting ideas that i've got in my head out into reality and out into my shop and out into the world but it's 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 a marathon not a sprint gentleness and consistency so this was really like calling me out to like just fucking slow your roll bitch like you have a chronic illnesses which fuck with your body you don't have all the fucking spoons in the world you just need to chill your tits and then i pull the therapists as a bit of encouragement and i think i'm actually going to pull one of these every single day and i've actually had this right up on my desk in front of me in my little phone holder in front of me to remind me and it is this adorable adorable doggy and it says anxiety lies there is no doom incoming and you're managing everything just fine and this just feels so apt for me just laying in bed yesterday in agony going i really need to be so pouches and i've got to get out of myself with these shop restocks i'm trying to get myself into a routine of doing drops every three weeks but my body keeps crapping out on me so i'm never getting ahead of myself or getting into a routine beating myself up pushing 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 it's not working anxiety lies it's fine it's fine it's a marathon not a sprint so wow that was a a lot let's do a little chatterbox i grabbed this because this was in the previous video i found because i keep this in with the box i made for my vanessa tarot so i'm gonna pick we've got donut we've got cupcake we've got strawberry we've got we've got sweetie oh my god can i just fucking we've got a sweetie can you see them I'm gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick cupcake. C U P C A K E. We've got one, two, five, and six. I'm gonna pick five because it turned up in my reading. One, two, three, four, five. How does this work again? I can't remember. Do you then pick another one? Four. I'm going to lift it up like totally <laughs> this was just meant to be a, a silly thing that I made for my to go in the box because it was like my teen teen in a teenager like totally like totally the cards are right they're calling me out you need to listen to your body but all that is to say is because <laughs> because this went missing it didn't go missing I put it somewhere so safe I couldn't fucking find it because I'm a banana I, I was hoping to do the inner child work with that beautiful, where is it, the little puggy corn notebook, I've got it up on my, my bookshelf, puggy corn book and use it for um, uh, Dorma Shell's like uh, tarot journaling exercise book thing that I've got and um, because I didn't find it, I couldn't find it, I couldn't work with it clearly, but then I'd gotten over, I'd gotten moved through that feeling of vulnerability and needing to parent my inner child and that feeling of vulnerability and squishiness and so I came out the other side of it without having done the inner child work will I still do the getting to know myself and get some books on inner child work to work with this yes but the moment for me that feeling for it has passed for the time being and it's there for me when I next want to do it I'm actually in a quite a good place with tarot right now so I'm just I just I don't want to force anything I don't want to force I'm really in my pips, I'm really in my pips. I'm really enjoying my, you know, the Pathfinder Oracle. This is really fun as well. Um, I've been really enjoying like having a play with this, even though it's not a pip deck. Um, so I'm just, I just, I'm just following my tarot bliss. I'm like, yeah, I would like to get back around to doing Thoth. Yes, I'm studying Thoth. Yes, I'd like to do some inner child work. Yes, I would like to get back on the Lenormand study wagon, but I, I need to just, phew, just chill like it's fine i just have to follow where my heart takes me um because i know what i'm like and there will come a time where i will be balls to the wall obsessed with thoth again there will come a time where i will be hammering the lenormand study it always happens i spiral i get to a certain point in the spiral and i'm like bored now i drop it i go to something else i've always been like it might be some neurodivergence there <laughs> 
but then I always come back to it and I go further into that little spiral and I stop and I go on to something else so it's fine so I am looking forward to working with these two together I'm going to try and pull one of these every single day what are you working with at the moment have you been pairing oh do you know what I didn't I didn't show you any I didn't show you any pairings let's just do sorry before I bugger off let's just do a quick just show you a few pairings just how cute I did show these in a previous video how cute these are together um, when I did a live I think it was like my birthday lot no not my birthday live it was a live some while ago but oh my god they just work so look at this like look at this color combo and they just work the art again the artwork is different but it works because they're of a similar kind of spirit I don't know oh my god cute uh so I'm really looking forward oh my god I just cannot so yeah I'm really looking forward to working with these um, pulling one of these every single day because even though I've, I've gone past that need for squishiness it's just such a cute fun deck it makes me so happy to look at it I think that's just as valid as well as Dr Nomi being adorable and cute and fluffy Are you okay boo -boo? She's very sleepy because she's she went out for a, a walk for an hour and a half with uh, my uh, spouse and she's now exhausted. <laughs> so yeah, that is going to be all for today. Again, a fairly longish one, but <laughs> we gotta do. Um, yeah, I was asking questions. That was it. Have you been pairing Dex Tarot with Oracle? What are your favourite combinations? Or do you do like do you do week ahead readings? Do you do month ahead readings? Do you do week ahead readings? Do you do all of them or a combination of them? I found that I would, there was a point where I was doing monthly, weekly and daily readings and it was just too much. And then I was also doing, you know, Sabat and Esbat readings. Now I will do um, at, the, at the moment, because it will change again, because our needs change depending on where we are in life. So at the moment, my current practice is I've just I was going to check in with my birthday year ahead spread my lunar my solar return spread every month and I tried checking in up with it after a month but it felt like not enough time has passed so every three months I'm doing quarterly check-ins which would have been yesterday but I wasn't feeling well so that'll be tonight I'll be doing a check-in three months feels like a good chunk of time to like really assess how that reading is progressing and where I'm seeing those cards and those energies in my life and then do my week ahead spreads pretty much every week barring like one I think I missed one or two this year so far but every other week I've done them um, and then I will just sporadically do readings when I need them so I might do an Esbat spread I might do a Sabat spread I might do a daily draw I just go with how I feel because I feel when I get too prescript with too prescriptive with it that's when I start to push back because I don't like rules so my own worst enemy so yeah let me know in the um, comments down below what your favorite combos are and how you regularly how regularly you like to read and if you've have felt the need with things being really just up in the air and difficult and weird even now still at least for me it is um and they have been the last two years we've come off the back of like two really intense years and we're not through it yet right so have you also been in that space where you've just needed something to hold your squishy, tender little heart for a while and hold your hands and walk you through? And if so, what decks have you used and have you found them useful? Because I want to know. Um, so yeah, thank you so much uh, for watching. Um, I really appreciate every one of you. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.